The views and opinions of this broadcast do not reflect the views and opinions of Armed Media, UNU Productions and its affiliates. Enjoy the show. Welcome to Talk Live Paranormal with Shannon and Bill. I'm Mr. Bill. I am Shannon. And we are coming to you live on Armed Digital Radio Media Broadcasting. I want to thank everybody <laughs> for listening. I didn't know what to say there for a minute. Uh, we uh, want to thank everybody for listening. I want to start off tonight by saying thank you to every men and women, past and present, that are serving and have served the United States military, the armed forces, what you guys do keeps us safe every day and allows us to do this. We want to thank you guys. And please, for those that are serving and are listening, come home safe. Keep your head down and get one for me, but keep your head down. Thank you for yes. what you do. Thank you all for your service and God bless. So, sounds like we have a bunch of, <laughs> bunch of stuff to talk about tonight. We, we both worked last weekend. Yes. Um, you were at Ashmore. I was at Missouri State Penn. Um, had quite a few little things happen down at Missouri. Have one that's hilariously funny that I, I almost can't wait to tell you about, so I'm going um, <laughs> to. I was, uh, I was on Building 3, which is the general population. On the northeast side, well, yeah, no, sorry, northwest side, <clears throat> which means on the top floor would be the where the uh, uh, white supremacy area is. All that you go up into those cells, and there's swastikas on the walls. They're decorated up with all their sayings and everything. It's pretty amazing to see, and pretty kind of freaky to see. But one of That's my that's where <laughs> James Earl Ray's cell is, right? Yep, he's on. He's actually on. His was on the same cell block area, but on the first floor on the east side of the building. Yeah, we had a lot of people going in there. Um, had some people that really probably needed to listen closely in their history class talking about James Earl Ray because uh, they. I don't think they really knew what they were talking about. Trying to talk about how he was, you know, put to death in that prison. No, he escaped from Missouri. State, and he didn't man. die there, did he? No, he escaped and then got caught and was put in a prison in Florida, and I'm pretty sure that's where he died. So, yeah, he was there. His cell is right there. We let people go in. You know, people go in. You know, not let people go in. They just go in because it's wide open. Um, yeah, but James Earl Ray did not die in Missouri State Pen. He escaped from the Missouri State Penitentiary. So, but on the north side, well, the other side... <laughs> I can't do this without laughing. So I usually right. start off. I usually start off what, with my groups on the outside of the building, kind of explaining to them what's inside the building, what we're going to go look at. And I said that we had a white supremacy area that we're going to kind of go see what we can get. And this guy in my group goes, "Hell yeah, I'm in." And I looked up, <laughs> and it was a black guy. <laughs> oh shit! And I was, I was like, "Okay, you're going up there." He goes, "Nope, not a problem." Was, you know, young guy. So we go in, we start getting things set up, uh, you know, start, start talking, and we start going through things. And I go, you ready to go up there? And he goes, uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I go, come on, you said you were going to go. He goes, but I'm only half black. <laughs> <laughs> I go, that, that's okay. And about that time, I didn't even see this other guy. A bigger guy. May, I mean, he was, he was bigger than me, taller, broader thicker he goes i'll go up with you he goes i'm only half black too together we make one solid brother let's go <laughs> so they head up there and he but you know they get all the way up there and we're i'm downstairs and i'm oh. I'm, I'm like okay why don't you go in this cell why don't you go in this other cell and then turn your lights on and look around and he walks in the younger guy walks in and he turns the light on and he's staring right at a big nazi swastika and I go, okay, now turn your lights off. Turn the lights off, and we start talking. And he goes, I don't, I don't, I don't feel real good up here. I, I don't, I, I don't feel real good up here. <laughs> and and the other, the the bigger guy's going, I'm, 
I'm fine. I'm fine. I go, you guys don't want to come down? The bigger guy's like, nope, nope, I ain't coming down. The young, the young guy's going, I, I don't, I don't think I like this up here. <laughs> yeah, I ain't gonna lie, Shannon. His, his, the younger guy's girlfriend was sitting on the floor almost pissing herself. She was laughing so much. She was trying not to make any noise laughing, but I, I just kept looking at her and there was tears just running down her face. It was hilarious. And then he goes, Ow! And he's got this big, huge scratch up the back of his neck. So I go, okay, I'm coming up. So I can't believe I'm going to say this out loud. I pretty much ran up the steps. I don't, I don't run, but once you know, I'll make sure our guests are okay. I get up there. He's kind of up against the railing, going, I, I think I really need to come down. So I was like, okay, come on with me. We'll go down. So we get down, and all of a sudden I look around and I hear, was I supposed to come down too? We left the other guy up there by oh my himself. God. I was like, well, you can stay up there if you want to. And I hear, uh, hell no. Remember, I'm only half black. <laughs> <laughs> so he comes down. We started getting a few other things. And then we get down, and I go, so how was it up there? And the, the young guy goes, it was a little weird. Not real scary, but a little weird. And about and the, the other guy, the bigger guy, goes, nah, that was nothing. Shannon, I had the white box sitting there. It wasn't plugged into anything. Oh. And, it, and it sounded like it exploded. Just like this. And it kept going on and on. And I shut the power off, and it kept going. So I'm like turning it down. I couldn't turn it down. I had to turn the power on, off, on, off, and finally it stopped. So it's sitting off the side with no power turned on. And we're talking and we're talking. And I looked at the guy. I go, you doing okay? He goes, yeah, it wasn't scary up there. And every time that beggar guy said that, the box made noise. And it wasn't even plugged in or turned on. And what is with that thing? It's possessed. It's freakishly possessed. And now every time we turn freakishly it on. Freakishly possessed. You, when it's going off by itself and it's not plugged into anything, there's something wrong. Um, so <laughs> that happened a couple of times. Then we had a guy, and he actually put some comments on our, our the Facebook about he had one of those flashlights. You have to click. It's a manual click that's on the bottom. Uh huh. And I look like a dork because I'm clicking my thumb right in front of me, like you guys can freaking see what I'm talking I about. I totally, I can totally see you right now. <laughs> I'm. I'm you, you see what I'm doing now? Uh huh. Uh, <laughs> Easy, um, easy. <laughs> so he stands there, and the flashlight turns on and turns off. And I go, oh, is everything okay up there? And I hear him talking to his wife. And he, she's going, you did that. And he goes, I'm not even touching this land right there. So he picks it up and starts showing it to her. And I yelled up. I go, I go, turn that light on again. And it turned on in his hand. And he didn't push the button. I, he goes, no, 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 turn it off. And, and it went off. He goes, we're coming down. <laughs> and they ran down. It was, there was so many little things that kept going on and on and happening over there where it just got stirred up. And it was, it was really, so we got there Thursday night huh? and we we were dropping off stuff and ghost hunts already had a group going. So we weren't actually part of working. We were just going to kind of, it gave Kelly and Michelle and Brittany and myself a chance to kind of walk through and kind of watch and see how they were doing stuff and kind of you know, do our own little hunt, you know, just for a quick time. And it just, it was, it was, everything was fine. And then we came back and did Friday and Friday evening was going okay. Then about, about 1230, the building and everything just shifted and it got feeling, it was feeling really weird and you couldn't pinpoint it. And it wasn't till later that we got told that Saturday was the anniversary of the riots that happened oh. there. Wow. So it, it was, it was like the whole, at first it got really calm, you know, like that calm before the storm. Uh -huh. And then for the rest of the time there on, on, on Saturday evening, it, oh, I must, no, sorry, it was fr from Friday into Saturday for the rest of the time on Saturday morning. It was just, it was nasty feeling. Then we got back there Saturday to start setting up and you walk in and you could just feel, you felt like you were being watched and felt like, you know, people wanted to just. It was almost like that feeling where you go into a local bar that you've never been before and people don't know who you are and they're staring at you like we're going to kick their ass. That's what we, everyone, the guests felt that way. We felt that way. The people at Missouri State Penn felt that way. There's a couple people at, in Missouri now, and, and not just because of this, but because of what's been happening since the beginning of the summer. 
um, won't go into some of the areas now that they take the guests to. They p- kind of point and go, you can go in there. And they let them go d- down to the, the uh, D3, down to the death row psych. They won't only go down on, there. Like, talking about only on like the anniversary night, you mean? No, period, they won't go down there. They, Why? There's, they, they, um, a couple of them were talking, and they say that there's one person in particular that some every time he goes in the, into that area, he, he comes out, he's a different person. He's mean, he's evil, and he doesn't even realize he's doing it. And they talk to him later, he's like, I didn't do that. What are you guys talking about? I'm not, you know, having fun. Some of the cops now won't even go in some of the buildings. They said it's just gotten so weird and so evil down there. Or so, not really evil, such a, a, an eerie feeling, I guess the easiest way to say it. Yeah. So it's getting, it's getting, it got a little stirred up. It, it's still stirred up. It's just really weird right now. Did you see the picture that, that Rob posted on Facebook um, where he was in the gas chamber? <laughs> oh my God. I got to tell you about that. Okay. So Rob got that one where there's somebody standing in the, you can see him in the window and there was yeah. nobody, and there was nobody there. We had n- nine other photos taken, and there's always somebody in the in the window in really? different different spots, and almost every one of them looked just like the one he got. It was weird. Now, see, um, they he, he a lot of people were commenting saying that, that it was like his reflection because of the mirror thing up on the ceiling or whatever. But you could actually see something different in the mirror. Then what yeah. was behind him reflecting off the glass, and then they kept saying that it was him holding up his phone, taking a picture. I'm like, he's not in a damn doorway. Whatever's reflecting off that that glass or whatever was standing it, in the doorway. It was actually, if you look at it closer, it was standing outside the doorway, looking in. Its face, though, like its yeah. face looked fucked up. Uh, trust me, nine other people caught the same, almost the same exact thing. Not in the same position, but in different areas down there in the gas chamber. It was weird. Now, I mean, people people were running up to us. Look at, look at, look at. And Rob and and Rob hadn't told anybody about the photos. And then he start, had, yeah. Then he would start telling people about it, and they start comparing them. So yeah, it was a little. Uh huh. <laughs> I need to start taking more photos when I go out. I'm so, when you're on an event with, you know, the company, then you're just, you're so into making sure they have a good time and making sure they take photos and make sure their recorder's running and everything else. And most of the good EVPs I get during the events is because I took my phone and recorded it off of somebody's recorder. I'm like, oh, that's a good catch. Let me use that. (laughs) And you know what? I actually bought a lapel mic that you can hook into the recorder and I haven't used it yet. Where I could hook it up and just walk around, oh, just like and, an external mic. Yeah, and you just you kind of cl- I could clip it on my shirt. Yeah, and just, I have a I couple just, of those for my handy cam. And you know, and I thought I don't know why I don't ever just hit record, drop it in my pocket, and let that record. I have now we've got we've had them for a while, and I just keep forgetting to use them. I always forget to turn on the. Oh my god! So I tried out my new camera this weekend, the new digital or oh, the new video camera. Okay. I turned it on. With the first group, had everybody wave, say where you know, kind of talked about where we were at. Yeah. It recorded me talking about where we're at, and then the light was on. It looked like it was recording. Nothing else recorded, and it's not like the file kept going. At first, I thought the camera malfunctioned, but I mean, the red light was on on the front saying it was recording. The screen was showing a countdown, you know, you know the time that it was recording. Right. But it, but it recorded nothing. The file is only like 10 seconds long, all night long. We need to go on a good investigation where it's not a company event, where it's just a a private event. Yes, we do. need a little fun. Yes, we do. I'm a little worried about this weekend coming up, though. Where are you going? Nopum. What is it? Nopum Sanatorium up in Duluth. Soda? Yeah. You're working with Beth, right? I don't know who all's working. Beth's going to Minnesota. She well, went, to New- went to New York and worked, uh, I think, Lizzie Borden. Okay. She flew into New York. She stayed with Pam and then went to do, I believe, Lizzie Borden, um, which is, I guess, three hours away from where Pam lives in New York. 
and then was flying out to Minnesota. She won't be back till like October second. <laughs> because when I was playing, when I told you earlier, I got I lost track of time. I was on the the PS4 playing the Tom Clancy. I was playing. Her husband was online, and him and I were playing, and I totally lost track of time. Like, oh shit, it's almost ten thirty. I gotta do a radio <laughs> show. I was like, peace out. <clears throat> yeah, I'm. 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 I. I've been reading on some of the history of the place. Um, it seems like there's some conflicting information on the internet because you know everything on the internet's true. Um, but I just I don't know, and I I, I told myself I got to stop reading because I really just want the experience now. And I know that some some of the goat like Ghost Adventures were just there. I think it was Ghost Adventures. Uh, we're, we're ju- it, it was just on TV, and Kelly and I both dove to turn the TV off because we didn't want to didn't want to taint anything that we we want that first experience to be the first experience, right? Um, so it's yeah, I'm 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 having some what I want to say some reservations on whether or not I actually want to I, I will want to go almost. <laughs> but but I want to go so bad. It's just like the, when the Sally House, it freaked me out. Of course, getting in hit in the head with a brick and then getting scratched and you know everything else that freaked me out. But it's just it's, it's something about it. This this sanatorium, well, sanitarium. What's the difference between a sanatorium and a sanitarium? Is it just oh. how Tyler? Is it just how Tyler says it? I think so. <laughs> Winnebago. <laughs> oh my god. Winnebago. I. You know what? And Beth got to work that weekend out there at the uh, at the amusement park or whatever. And I haven't heard from anybody on how that weekend went. I haven't heard anything about that at all, other than the pictures of everybody sleeping in tents. And that's about all I've heard. Yeah, so. I mean, I I talked to her when she came back, but like she didn't mention anything about. It's almost like either they didn't get a lot or didn't want to talk about it. I don't know. So you, Tyler would talk about it at Missouri with everybody there. Well, I don't. I don't know. There was uh, so many. There's so many things going on down That's, there at Missouri. So I was gonna say because of all that, it probably wasn't a tight ship. Yeah. So you were at Ashmore. Oh yeah, I was at Ashmore. How'd that go? Well, it's like probably the world's smallest group I've ever had in my life on one of these events. <laughs> um, we only had six people, and then uh, I brought my oldest and a friend of hers. So all together, we had nine people there. And usually, Robin's he likes to have about twenty there. He doesn't like to have more than that because yep. I mean it's only three floors. You got the basement, like the basement and the first floor is kind of like the same floor, and then you got the second floor and the third floor. Okay. And I know you haven't been out there yet, so it's and I tried to describe it. <laughs> what, what happened? Or... <laughs> but I don't. I can't explain it because the last time, well, it's probably been like four times prior to the last time uh, when Beth and I were there for the the hundredth anniversary of Ashmore. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were with uh, Mike Couch and Amanda Grimes, <clears throat> and we were in that same little room I was talking to you about on the second floor. Um, the little room right beside the nurse's station, which used to be a twins, it was twin uh, girls room. Um, and one of their names was Mary. Um, but we were in that room that weekend with Mike Couch and Amanda and just had the phasma box and we had the door closed. And there's like a little, um, like a reindeer bell kind of hanging on a piece of yarn or whatever on the door handle on the outside. Okay. And we were sitting there doing the phasma, just the four of us. And... We heard the the bell jingle on the door handle, and Mike was like, "What was that?" And then through the phasma, it said, "Go check it out." <laughs> so you know, we all get up and we're we're checking it out and whatnot. We couldn't find out where the hell it was coming from. Same night, something got thrown across the nurses station counter, which is right outside that doorway. Which we found what was on the floor. They got thrown. Um, so that was you know, it was legit. But then. This past Friday, same spot, uh, same room, where I'm in there with three guests. Yeah, no, five. I can't count right now. <laughs> uh, I've had too much excitement going on tonight here. Uh, 
six. Because I took three. I took Taylor, her friend, and then there was another young kid that was there with his dad. And I sent them all the way to the other end of the building into the piano room. Which is a, it's big and open. It's open now. They tore down some of the wall. And they're down there. They took a periscope. And we're all the way down at the end in that little room. Doors closed. That bell's still hanging there. And we're just talking. And I'm going to play it for you. (laughs) I'm going to play it for you because this is two investigations for me in a row where I've had something loud happen. Um, and I don't know what to think about that yet. Um, so... They're coming for you. (laughs) I got a lot of protective shit in here at my apartment. Ain't nothing coming in here. Um, but so the six of us are in this room, doors closed. There's nothing on the nurse's station counter, even on the back side of the counter. I think there was like one really big, heavy, it looked like table legs or something, but they were all kind of like twined together on the countertop. And if that would have fell, that would have been very, very, it would have been louder than what we heard. So we're sitting there doing a phasma box session. And you'll even hear at the beginning of this audio where through the phasma box, you hear little girls say something about the ball. And I'm like, oh, you want to play with the ball? And then it's actually perfect timing because it gets kind of quiet. And then you hear what sounds like the roof caving in outside the door. Okay, go for it. <laughs> and we're all we're all just sitting there like, okay, the hell was that? And then you'll hear us come out and you'll hear us hollering at them down the hallway. They're like, was that you guys? And yeah, so I'll go ahead and play it. And it's kind of loud. Turn up your headphones if you want to, but it's kind of loud at first. Oh, here we go. Can you tell the ball? You see the ball? What the hell was that book? I get too quick for the heaven. Okay, you just go first, get up. I can't even wind. No, I'm not even just get up and move. No. <laughs> okay, so I don't I was about to say I don't know when I turn the recorder off, but <clears throat> notice after they come out they ask if that was us, you hear me say the the lights on in the stairwell. Yeah. Um, Robin has sensor lights in both stairwells at both ends of the building, so they 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 kick on and off like all the time. But it was just coincidental how and they stay on for a minute before they go off. But how the noise happened that we came out and then the stairwell was lit up just to the right of the nurses station. Go down, up or down, and then good, good. I don't even know. I don't, I don't know how to. We tried to. There was nothing on the nurse's counter. There was nothing behind the nurse's station. Um, caddy corner from the nurse's station, like across the hall, is uh, was one of the bathrooms, the shared bathrooms for the second floor. And when we had walked by that door trying to see if anything had fallen from the ceiling, because that's what it sounded like, um, there was a rock uh, in the middle of the the hallway there on the second floor. So I picked it up. And I was like, this was not here before. And then you look in that room and there's two other rocks like beside that door inside the bathroom. And I'm like, here, Taylor, grab this and throw it up against that door right there really hard. He did. I mean, it's kind of like a metal inch and a half thick door. And it it kind of sounded like the noise, but you would have had to have thrown a handful of rocks to make the same noise. You know what I mean? So not only did you have something make a loud bang, but you had something setting off sensors and no one was out there. Second floor, and Robin has his own sensors. Um, I believe they were, they might have been on the third floor. But he's got the sensors along the wall in the hallway. And one sensor kept turning off near us. We're all behind the nurse's station. I'm like, everybody come back behind here so we don't set off the sensor. They would go off. And to the left down the hall, about 20 feet, one sensor would light up. The one to the right of us at the nurse's station would light up. And we're not moving. We're standing right behind the nurse's station. So it was, that is the, some of the most activity I've, I've ever gotten out there 
And wow. That, that noise was a hell of a lot louder than what Beth and I got with the little ringing of the bell. And then we took, we we went, we tried to get it to happen again. We couldn't get it to happen again the rest of the night. And then we went down to where Taylor and them were in the piano room. And they got tables set up where they're set up for Ash Bash. Which I think is, I think it's this coming weekend is okay. Ash Bash. Um, so they got tables everywhere set up. And we're just kind of leaning up against the tables. And we had the periscope sitting on the floor, uh, kind of away from us, two people on the other side. And Taylor was asking questions. I guess they had sung a song while they were down there. We didn't hear them. They were singing, and they the periscope was lighting up. And then they, she was asking, you know, if you can, if you want us to sing again, can you light it up? And it lit up. And it even lit up on yellow first in the middle. I can't tell you the last time I've seen that happen. It's usually like red or green and then works its way over with both of mine. So they did that, and as they, they sung the ABCs, and as they were singing, it was jumping colors. It was lighting up like as they were singing. Was singing with them? More or less? I guess. I guess. Well, we're <laughs> moving the lights <laughs> with them singing. So you, and that was pretty crazy. That's wild. So I don't. And, that's uh, two weeks. That's two investigations for me in a row where loud noises. I just. I don't know. Well, we all we also had some people that were uh, something I've never seen happen before. We had REM pods going off like crazy. Several people brought them and they'd put them all through different buildings. And as we'd be sitting there talking, you could see them down at the end of the halls just going off. It was just freakishly crazy. And I mean, hearing them too. Yeah, hearing things, seeing things go off. It was it was like one of those. It was almost like like the. For lack of terms, it was like a almost a perfect hunt. We almost everybody got something out of it, and but everybody saw stuff. Oh my god! I got to tell you about. <laughs> Go ahead, and I'm gonna tell them about the boiler room too. So we same. we had things coming across radios that we weren't saying. Um, one point in time, uh, this uh, Amanda and and Brittany were walking, and they were going to go down to the death row. And I guess over the radio it goes, it pretty much said, you know, let's go downstairs to death row over their <laughs> radio. And they thought it was me. I didn't even have a radio. Well, then they, they were all standing there and Andrew, I guess he had heard it. And he goes, did that tell you to, to you know, come down here? And uh, Ashley and Tyler were downstairs in death row. And Andrew and Brittany, and Brittany's got it, got all this on her. They were doing live video, so I need to pull it down off their site so we can, you know, play it back. But over the radio, it goes, you hear An uh, Tyler's voice go, a uh, Andrew, get down to death row. Get down here now. So he takes off like something's wrong, and about the time he gets to the door, they're coming out. He goes, what did you need? Nothing. I didn't call you. I never yelled for you. No, it came over the radio. I'm, I didn't do anything over the radio. And then later on in the evening, we had a lady who was sitting there with me in Gen Pop eating a piece of chocolate, which wasn't happy as she was eating food. But she goes to the spirit. She goes, spirit, if you like some, I, I, you know, I'll give you some chocolate. Do you want a piece of chocolate? And the radio that I had at the time on my hip, it was my wife, you know, Kelly's voice came across. She goes, would you like a piece of chocolate? And we hear, yes, I would. And it was over the radio, and it was Kelly's voice. Well, she was she was with a group of people, and everybody there said she never said that. Nothing came across the radio even for her to want to say that. That's that funny, because kind of I'm that, eating chocolate. Would you like a piece of chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> But it was just, it was just right. I'll give you a piece of chocolate. Would you like a piece? Yes, I would. And I jumped. Everybody in the group jumped back, and then we all got to giggle and laughing. And uh, uh, Amanda, who's with me, goes, "Goes, you didn't jump back. You did that little prancy dance thing down in the hallway." And people were either laughing at you or laughing at the fact they just got the crap scared out of them with a the radio. <laughs> That's happened to us before at Ashmore with the radios. When I worked out there with Stan. Just a woman's different. voice, a, a little girl's voice came through on the radio, which, considering the history there. So what, well, happened, to the what happened to the boiler room? Well, 
because they cut you off. I'm sorry. Oh, you're fine. The younger kid that was uh, with Taylor and her friend that went down into the piano room, he was getting, like, his shoulder was getting touched, and he was getting spooked. I don't know how old he was. He was a teenager. Um, He told his dad, he said, I, he goes, I've had enough. I'm gonna. I'm not sleeping in the building. I'm going to go sleep in the car. Um, so I was like, okay, so we were down to, uh, Taylor and her friend and then the other four guests that were left, which was two women that had been with Beth and I at RCI before. Um, uh, Hannah wasn't feeling good, the one that did the history tour and everything, so she, she lives in a camper, a trailer on the ground, so she went to her trailer, and it was just us in the building, and then there were two, I want to say, they were probably 18 or 19 year old girls, and... Them four and myself went down into the boiler room, and the one woman started at EVP where she's asking some questions, and we're just kind of standing, huddled in a circle, and the one girl said, I, I don't know what this means, but it feels like some something is pushing my pants up against my skin on the back of my leg, so I shine a flashlight, she turns around, and there's like a three finger printed on the back of her leg, like something had... Know, not harmfully grabbed her leg because she didn't jump or anything. Um, just like something put their her hand their hand on her calf is what it looked like, but it only had like the middle finger, the pointy finger, and then the one other side of the middle finger. It was just three fingers that were shown on there. Like if you'd have stuck your hand in dust and then touched, she had like black Adidas like stretchy pants on. Wow! So uh, they took a picture of that. Uh, then they were done and went out and slept in their car. Um, and then it was down to just the three of us. And <laughs> we went into one room and the bat was out. Um, apparently they have two bats, but one actually came into one of the side rooms. Normally, you know how they'll fly up and down the main hallway or whatever. Yeah, this one came in the room with us and was like flying around the a small ass room on the ceiling, like from the window to the door and back and forth and. We're all huddled down on the ground, and <laughs> they were like, I need to take a break. And I was like, okay, well, I'm not far from going to bed. This is like 4 o'clock in the morning. I was like, I have to, and they drove about, they came from Toledo, Ohio, so they drove like an hour longer than I did. But yeah, it was a good group, and it was, I mean, it was good activity, but I still don't know what the loud noise was. I And you try so hard to debunk shit like that. And that's the hardest part when you try to, you know, and well, I guess it's not the hardest part. It's it's the best part. If you can't debunk it and you have, say, all six people that you had there and you're trying to debunk things and you just can't and everybody had the same experience, it yeah. just makes it so much, so much easier or so much better for everyone just to kind of look at each other and go, okay, we're all together. We're all right here. It happened. We know it happened. And then, then your brain starts going, how the hell am I going to explain this to people? What actually happened without them thinking I'm crazy? You, <laughs> <laughs> so, so you kind of go, um, hmm, what do I but need If you to think do about here? it, everybody, yourself and everybody in the group is crazy for doing what we do. People but think we're nuts anyway. Uh, my mom thinks we're batshit crazy. She goes, I really want to go, but I don't want to go. If I go, will you not be let me be scared? I'm like, hey, Mom, if you go, I'm going to be scared the crap out of you. I promise you that. Now, see, that's how my mom was at first, too, until we investigated. When I told you that story where we investigated her old house and got my grandpa coming through the spirit box. And she was all like, you need to go back. I was like, no, Mom, it's breaking in and airing. <laughs> Just knock on the door. Hey, uh, can I come in for a little while? Yeah, somebody lives there now, so I hope he's haunting them. That's lovely. Well, my grandpa's awesome. I miss my gramps. But he's awesome. He never did. I mean, he's had conversations with, with my oldest and my niece, who's a year older than Taylor. They're 15 and 16 now. But when they were like 6 and 7 is when he passed away. And they sat in the corner at the table where they used to color and draw and stuff and carrying on a conversation with some just random person not sitting there with them, and then you ask them who they're talking to, and both of them turn around and say, Grandpa? Like, we were supposed to be able to see him? And they're staring right at him. Yeah. That's and awesome. So, I mean, he never, if it, if it was really him and everything, he never did anything out of the ordinary to where we'd have thought the place was haunted. 
Maybe he's just not done yet. Maybe More he's of a protection to thing. Yeah, maybe he's there to just watch over his his uh, great grandkids. What he's there for? I'll take it. I'll take it over him being there and dick. <laughs> So th- that was pretty much my weekend and and your weekend and we'll have to I'll have to save Rob's picture um that he posted on Facebook and posted on our our Talk Live Paranormal page on Facebook so people can see what we're talking about. I'm trying to find it right now. I, uh, I don't know what it is, but if I get on the internet while I'm talking to you when you talk, you're like breaking up really bad. It's like s- lagging. It's like lagging. I hear every other syllable. So if you're on the internet? Yeah, if I Google something and I have Google oh, okay. pulled up and you're talking, it like breaks up really bad. That's not good. What is Rob's last name? Oh, it's like some weird last name. Like really long. Oh, I, I typed Rob in here and it came up to Rob Demarest. That's not the That's Rob my I boy. want. <laughs> No, but we <clears throat> we could probably talk a whole episode about some of the places that they've been because that was one of the things I wanted to bring up last week. Just kept on going with Rob and everything. Well, what is some of the stuff we were supposed to have talked about that we said we were going to talk about we never seemed to get to? I don't Do know. We, we talked about the SCD-1, which was the Huff equipment, which I'd actually like to try it out. Yeah. Um, what did we say it was like twenty bucks or something? I think I actually bought it. Have you tried it? No. My one tablet, and then I left my. Ta- I always seem to leave my tablet here. <laughs> I keep forgetting to bring it. Jeez, I have so much other stuff that I'm loading right now. Our van is loaded. The hill. Oh, I guess Shan- you there, Shannon. Yeah, I, Jimmy just popped okay. out. I guess. Oh, I was like, who just timed out? That's not I know I, I wasn't even on the screen. I'm like, uh, Bill, talk. <laughs> <laughs> Please say somebody's here. Um, no. So it's I don't know what we were talking about. I can't remember what I was saying. I am too <laughs> sober to be doing this. <laughs> well, I was flipping through the pages while you're trying to remember. I was flipping through the pages. Um. On stuff we talked about. Did we talk about the the Clark's Air Force Base Hospital? Did we talk about that bit, one last week? A little we? bit, but we, we didn't do go much into it. Well, I didn't. you had it pulled up on Google, and I just had a little bit wrote down. But it's, it's the Clark Hospital, but it's on Clark's Air Force Base. And it's in the Philippines. <clears throat> and it yeah. was used during World War II and the Vietnam War. Of course, it's abandoned now. Uh, it operated from early 1900s until 1991, and the reason it, it shut down in 1991 is because it didn't really have much of a choice because it had a a volcano. Yeah, yeah it, it kind of sucks when you got a volcano that just decides to erupt next to you. The Clark Air Force Base is a Philippine Air Force Base based on Lunzon Island in the Philippines. Yeah. Uh, located there, Clark. It was previously a United States military facility operated by the United States Air Force under the aegis of Pacific Air Force. Uh, in the spring of 2016, an air contingent. Oh, wait, that's when they were deployed. I don't care about that part. I want to get to the good part. Where was it that it was? Find shooting? the good part. What? Oh, the- it says on October 29th, 1987, unidentified gunmen shot and killed three soldiers. On March 14th, 1990, communist rebels shot and killed two soldiers. There. Okay. That sucks. Well, that would suck anywhere. Yeah, well, yeah, especially like, you know, anybody getting shot like outside your kitchen window. Um,. Wikipedia sucks sometimes. Rainport. Yeah. Went dead. Well, the reason that I brought up that one, I mean, oh, well, one of the reasons yeah, I found was it. because we're on armed radio. But when you, I'll go ahead and let you mention what you found again. And then 
then we'll go over if we have time. We'll go over what I was talking about. Um, my screen just went blank. Where'd it go? Screen or it's, your brain? My screen. It's like really <laughs> bl- It's like I was talking about it, and then it. So how you doing? Good. <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> Asking questions and answering yourself. <laughs> well, all right. Um, okay, so search for it again. I Anyways, am... <laughs> I had pulled that one up because it is one of the episodes of GHI. I figured we're always talking about locations in the U.S. And GHI is basically uh, haunted locations international. User joined your channel. Oh, he's back. Hear me. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> um, so like a lot of the places that they invested or well where they investigated on GHI, they have I think three seasons. And the first two seasons was when Rob was lead investigator and then I think Barry took over in season three, but I think that was their final season. Um but they've investigated like in England, Italy, Scotland, Romania, Slovakia, Germany. Zealand, Ireland, Brazil, Denmark, and that is just a few of them. And but these places, like, you can watch every episode on YouTube. It used to be on Netflix, but they took it's off of Netflix now. So the only time you can, the only place you can watch it is on YouTube, and you can watch the full episodes. And just the history behind all these locations and all these different countries is freaking crazy. And I forgot which one they did. They did one on an island too. Where they had to take a boat to it, and then I think the guy left with the boat, so they were basically on the island no matter what. <laughs> I don't think he was far away, but they he pretty much dropped them off, and they were the only ones on this little island. It's just he a said, bunch of uh, abandoned buildings. He said, "Oh, the hell with it! I ain't going there." Nope, <laughs> I drop you off and leave you. But you can see the episode of the Clark Hospital. On the Air Force Base, it's in Season 1, Episode 20. And it's the very beginning of the episode, so you can actually watch them investigate it. Now, it because of that volcano, it was and right afterwards, it was completely gutted. So, I mean, you can kind of see all the, the main posts and stuff, but there's hardly any walls. You can pretty much look right through it, from the pictures I saw, anyway. Yeah, it looks like most of the stuff that happened, the, 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 the biggest thing that I found so far is that once that volcano started and they started getting people out there, there was so much ash and everything that was there. It yeah. was so nasty that the ash was so strong that it was not only peeling the paint, but it was destroying concrete. And that was just the ash. It was actually eating away at windows and walls and everything. And it's it, it's on one of the history things that we found, it was, it was talked about how that it was one of the most, the most, uh, uh, where was it? It was it was one of the most powerful uh, volcanoes. Not or, just really volcanoes, but one of the most powerful eruptions with the amount of stuff that it was putting off. It was oh, okay. so nasty. I want to go back to the seriously not find that thing. No, I'm, I'm, my computer is like freaking out. I mean, I'm like, okay, let's we'll let it happen. I've never seen the computer do this. I click on something that takes me completely somewhere else. It keeps taking me back to the Frankenstein's castle. Oh, that's right. We talked about that one, too. You'd been there that one, though. Yeah, that was fun. My When we were stationed in Germany, and I, now it has a picture of the castle. When, when we were stationed in Germany, we got to go there. and it's it's They call it the Frankenstein castle because they're very sure that this is the one that when Mary Shelley wrote Frankenstein and they made it, uh, this is what she uh, used as her, uh, you know, her inspiration to write the whole thing, and then now this has been deemed as Frankenstein's castle, and it's just very weird. It's freaky to be in. It's pretty much just it's really destroyed and broken down because of of the war of uh, you know being part being bombed in the war. Right. Um, but it was yes, yeah, it's, it's really. Really cool, actually. It's a if you get a chance, and I know everybody out there. Talk, we talk about you know you should go here and go there and go here and go there and blah 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 blah. If you get a chance to go overseas to some of these, I would and I would love to. Oh, I would jump all over it. Oh, I, I think that just having the ability to go there, whether or not we can, you know, go there and 
and I'd love to go, you know, ghost hunting and go to different locations that that people have been. But just having a chance to get out and go see something else outside the United States, and you know, again, going going paranormal investigating uh, would be awesome to do. I would love to go to Argentina and hit some of these locations at Miramar. Uh, at the Grand Hotel Vienna, it's that one just looks phenomenal. It, they they say Hitler's ghost is there, so that's that is that the one with the big castle, like broken up castle. Yep, yep. Yeah, yep. that was a good episode. And then to um to I would love to try to go to what they call Dracula's Castle in Romania. Um, I would really, really, really like to hit someplace in Africa. Uh. Just because there's such a history there of what you you never know what's gonna what you're gonna get, but my ultimate favorite, other than going back to Germany and going to to, to Auschwitz. Auschwitz, Auschwitz, I would love to hit some castles in either England, Ireland, or Scotland because there's so much history there of, and I hate history. Y'all got to realize, um, I never understood why in school I wanted to learn when Lincoln took a shit uh, because I didn't think that was something I really needed to know. But this part of it, it just drives me insane that I, I start reading on it and I can't stop and I really want to know more and I want to know more and then I want to go there. And then I look at it and I jokingly one night went, I'll just get plane tickets. And I look up plane tickets and realize I'm broke. I can't afford nothing. Um, so hey, every day. <laughs> my, my bank account cries. No, I'm sorry. I got nothing for you. I'll have to but, share this link to our Facebook page too, because I, I was tagged on uh, Facebook, and it says this haunted road trip will lead you to the scariest places in Florida. A haunted road trip? When are we going? That's just Whenever, gas, man. That's just gas. The lottery. That's just gas and food. Let's go. Um, <laughs> it looks like it starts. You can go all the way down to below Fort Lauderdale. So basically. Almost directly across the state from Naples, where I'm from, just below Hollywood. Uh, it's at Biltmore Hotel, which is, is considered Miami. Miami Coral Cable Gables. I've never heard of it, but it goes all the way up the uh, the coast, pretty much, all the way up to St. Augustine Lighthouse, and then it cuts across the state, um, all the way just about to St. Petersburg, and then cuts back in around Arcadia and comes back down to that point below in the hotel. It looks like the total drive is 14 hours and 15 minutes. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you right now, the worst part about driving back home is once you cross the Florida-Georgia line, that is the longest part of the trip. It's almost seven hours to get all the way down to where I'm from. I hate it. <laughs> but sometimes... I hate to say it. Sometimes the drive seems like the worst, but sometimes you never know what's going to get a either said oh, or I know. b what's going to be um, well not said, or then you turn around and go, oh, uh, <laughs> some of the conversations we had. Like I took a wrong turn coming home this last time last weekend, and From we Missouri? ended up and said, yeah, I took one wrong turn and they won't let me live it down and I ended up taking us over into Duluth, Minnesota. <laughs> I mean not Duluth, over into oh uh oh, over into Illinois somewhere. <laughs> like I don't remember crossing a river going down here. We just go from Iowa to Illinois. Something's not right. <laughs> well yep, sure enough on this trip there's a total of seven locations. Oh okay. eight. There's eight. So you've got the Biltmore Hotel slash Miami Coral Gables. I have, like I said, I've never heard of that, but of course I haven't spent a whole lot of time across the state. So, um, it says <laughs> one of them is the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, Casa Kennedy Space Center's on it. That's what it says: Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. And then right before that, you get to that, it's Ashley's of Rockledge. I've never heard. I've never heard of any of these. So, and then the mm, Saint Augustine Lighthouse, Casa Casadega Hotel, um, 
Fernando Heritage Museum on the other side, on the Gulf side, and then the Theater, and Arcadia Opera House, shops and museum. I don't think I've heard of hardly any of those. I haven't either, and my first 20 years of my life was in Florida. Of course, <laughs> I wasn't doing this back then. I was more concerned about playing in the mud. So. Is that what you kids call it these days, playing in the mud? <laughs> I spent probably 80% of my childhood out near the Everglades. <laughs> I'm going to find this picture from Rob. It's going to kill me if I don't. Is that what you're looking for? That's what I'm scrolling through my my, my stuff trying to find. I know he put it here. He just did it. Or I just saw. Why don't you just look up his. Because I went to his Facebook site and I couldn't find it there. It's weird. Like he just posted it onto somebody's site. Maybe somebody shared it. Well, you're not lying. I, don't, I, I don't see it. But see, it popped up in my news feed, so I don't... Huh. Roll a song. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> it said roll a song till we come back. Um, <laughs> almost like he, he posted to Ghost Hunt's page, maybe? I don't know, but I don't. But none of my alert, any of my notifications or anything, doesn't have anything there. That's weird. I know I saw it. Uh, well, I oh, commented wow. on it, and then he. So it's got to be. We're all losing our mind. Oh, oh yeah. Get <laughs> out look. Anyways, we'll find it. And we'll post it to the Facebook page so you guys can see what we're talking about. I can't find it. I'm on my phone looking. Oh, wait. Oh. <laughs> he posted something on the Ghost Hunts page saying he wanted to take a minute to thank all the amazing guests in the Braves Missouri State. Was it in the comments, maybe? I don't know. We did have some really good people down there. I mean, we had a great crowds. Were awesome people just kept people the energy level all night long was just phenomenal um until people started walking down to well they walked down to the gas chamber was fine then they realized i gotta go back up there don't i <laughs> and i kind of looked up and said yep and so do i so here we go <laughs> now one cool thing about ashmore that i really like is uh they have the 360 pups throughout the building. Like Robin has them hanging in the hallway, some big, bigger rooms. And all Hannah's got to do is flip a switch and they all turn on. So you have pretty much an IR light throughout the whole damn building. If you wanted to bring just a handy cam that had the small IR, it would light up the hallways and everything for that camera. And of course, I didn't bring a camera. Or I did, but it wasn't full spectrum. Well, so it wouldn't why matter. Not? Because, Why like I said, not? I don't get to, I don't have time to, to get to play with my toys, which, you know, I've got cases and backpacks of. You know, <laughs> I bring, like, the bare essentials that I don't mind lending out to some of the guests. So. I've actually, uh, the, okay, so here, here's a question. The, I saw this on Facebook earlier. If you're going to go on a ghost hunt now and you decide you're going to go, which would you rather go with? Some of the new technology? Or old school? I I would probably go with old school just because I think the Ovilus 3 is better than the 5. <laughs> but I mean, not um, even using... I'm talking old school, old school, old school. Like a no, recorder and like just, no, no cameras? Like, yeah, just, no cameras, just going with a recorder. And I'm talking, you know, if you can get you find them, like the old school handheld reel-to-reel recorders. Which just record everything. They don't. There's no filter. It's just everything is there. Would they be noisy though? Not always. Most of them are pretty quiet, which is neat. I I mean I would do it. I tell the guests all the time. I'm you know I'm cool with sitting in a room and pitch. I, I like to sit at least sit in a room for a good fifteen twenty minutes with nothing running. 
trying to get them to be as quiet as possible and just sit and listen. Like so many of them don't have the patience to do that. They want they want to constantly move around, their flashlights on. It's it's hard to investigate sometimes and listen for new stuff when you can't yeah, hear agree. all the good stuff. Now I'm knocking computers over. Um, yeah, I know. It's Sometimes it's really hard when you're sitting there just, you know, you start talk people going, you know, you're going to hear more. You know, we need to stop just for a few minutes just to start listening. And then the water bottle clicking. And oh, the, God. And people talk, yeah. And I don't crinkle, know anybody. Crinkle, crinkle. I don't like. I don't know anybody who would sit there long enough just to, you know, eat anything. You go to a, a, a conference or you go to anything and somebody starts clicking a water bottle, you could tell it's just annoying the living crank out of anybody and everybody that's there. Oh, I know. <clears throat> so. But is, that is like the one thing that most places will let you take throughout the building as long as you bring the water bottle back is a bottle of water. 